The learning objective of the topic is explain the relationship between the photoelectron spectrum of an atom or ion and the electron configuration of the species, the interactions between the electrons and the nucleus. So in this video, I'll be talking about photoelectron spectroscopy about its spectrum and I will be explaining the relationship between the spectrum as well as the electronic configuration and the relationship between spectrum and the interactions between electrons and the nucleus. Hello everyone, this is topic 1.6 photoelectron spectroscopy. This is taken from AP Chemistry College Board. In topic 1.5, I talked about how to write the electronic configuration of different atoms or different elements. If you want to know more about it, you can watch the topic 1.5 from my channel. Now, what we do is we arrange the orbitals according to their energies and then we start filling up the orbitals with the electrons. We need to see that how many electrons are present in that element. For example, if we are talking about nitrogen, nitrogen has total of seven electrons and each orbital can accommodate maximum of two electrons. So 1s will have two electrons, 2s will have two electrons and then 2p will have three electrons. So if you count these electrons, you will see that there are total of seven electrons. So if we want to write the electronic configuration of nitrogen from this orbital diagram, we will write it as 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So here we can see that the orbitals are having some energies or you can say the electrons are having that those energies and they are revolving around the nucleus in these orbitals. Now here we don't write the exact values of energies but if we want to know the exact value of each electron in the uh, in the atom we can use the technique which is called as PES or photoelectron spectroscopy. Let's see how does this technique helps us in knowing those values. So PES is photoelectron spectroscopy or it is also called as photo emission spectroscopy. This spectroscopy is an experimental technique which is used to determine the relative energies of electrons in atoms and molecules. I already told you about this in the previous slide. I showed you that the electrons are arranged in the orbitals in the atom. So these, this technique actually tells us about the energies of those electrons. Now in this photoelectron spectroscopy, it has X-rays which have energy that they can actually remove the electrons from the atoms. It might be core electrons, it might be valence electrons and these electrons when they are removed, they give some signals which is called as PES spectrum. Now this PES spectrum is a graph of relative number of electrons versus the binding energy. Now what is this binding energy? The binding energy of an electron is the minimum energy that is required to remove an electron from an atom. Now from this definition you will see that this is almost similar to what we talk in about ionization energy. But in ionization energy definition, we talk about the energy which is required to remove the outermost electron. But here binding energy means the energy which is required to remove any electron from the atom. It might be a core electron, it might be valence electron. The units of binding energy can be electron volt or joules as it is same for the ionization energy also. Now what is photoelectron spectrum? I told you that photoelectron spectrum is a graph between the binding energy and the relative number of electrons. Now the binding energy of an electron in an atom depends on its location around the nucleus. 
as the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in different orbitals some of the orbitals are near to the nucleus as you can see here this orbital is near to the nucleus and this outer orbital is little bit far from the nucleus so it means that the attraction between this electron and this nucleus would be more than this electron and the nucleus and that is why the binding energy of this electron would be more than this electron so the valence electrons it means this outermost electron have the lowest binding energy as it is far off from the nucleus but if we are talking about core electrons they have higher binding energies as they are near to the nucleus now if you see the graph the spectrum you will see that the x x is is binding energy and here on the right hand side it is zero value and on the left hand side it is 100 value so it means that binding energy is increasing towards the left hand side so it is increasing towards this side so it means that this binding energy is more than this binding energy so this binding energy would correspond to the core electrons because core electrons have higher binding energy but this signal would be for the valence electron because it is it has lesser value now this spectrum is for lithium here you can see that for lithium there are two electrons in the core shell so these two electrons will show the same peak or you can say same signal because they have the same binding energy they are at the same distance from the nucleus but if we are talking about this electron there is only one electron here so if we talk if we compare the intensities of these two signals we will see that this intensity of this peak is more than intensity of this peak or you can say the this peak is almost double than this one peak so this intensity tells us about how many electrons are there as this peak is due to the core electrons so there are two core electrons so that is why the intensity is also double so the electrons in a particular subshell of an atom have the same binding energy and each of the peaks correspond to the electrons in different subshell now let's see how to get the idea of electronic configuration from this spectrum now we know that this is for uh, this this peak is for core shell or you can say core electrons as the nearest shell to the uh, nucleus is 1s so i will write it as this peak is for 1s as we have another peak here so this means that this bigger peak will have the to uh, fully filled orbital so this 1s will have two electrons because of the intensity also you can see and this is for 2s so the electronic configuration would be 1s2 2s1 so if we don't know about which element is there you can just add up the superscripts here so it is 2 plus 1 so it is 3 electrons so this means that the atom or element which has 3 electrons this spectrum corresponds to that atom so here the spectrum is for lithium now let's see an example of an unknown element now this photoelectron spectrum has three peaks but we know that the peak which is which has the highest binding energy would be for the 1s orbital so we can write that this is 1s orbital now the second peak would be for 2s orbital right and the third peak would be for 2p orbital now we need to see that how many electrons are present in each orbital as you can see here that there is next uh, second peak which is 2s orbital is also present so it means that 1s would have two or uh, two electrons now peak for 2p orbital is also present so 2s will also have two 
electrons now the next thing is the about the third peak or you can say the last peak now the last peak can be fully filled or it cannot be fully filled to see that how many electrons are present in 2p orbital we need to compare the intensities if we compare the intensities you can see that the 2p signal is double to that of 2s signal so it means that that if 2s orbital has two electrons then the 2p orbital will have four electrons so the electronic configuration would be 1s2 2s2 2p4 so let's count the superscript number so it is 2 plus 2 plus 4 this makes eight electrons so which element in the periodic table has eight electrons it is oxygen so this photo electron spectrum is for oxygen atom so like this we can actually find the electronic configuration of the element as well as the uh, identity of the element for which the spectrum is given now let's see one more example now here you can see that there are five signals given in the photo electron spectrum so what we will do is we will write, start writing the uh, the orbitals for each signal so this one would be for 1s this one would for 2s this is for 2p this is the next orbital which is filled is 3s and this is for 3p now let's write the number of electrons in each orbitals so this will have two electrons this has two electrons 2p orbital is fully filled here so it has six electrons 3s orbital has two electrons now we will see we see that the 3p orbital is not fully filled because p orbital has six electrons so the intensity should be similar to that of 2p but here the 3p is signal is weak so it means that 3p orbital is not completely filled now let's compare the intensities so 3s orbital has double intensity to that of 3p orbital so it means that 3p orbital has one electron because it is half of that of 3s orbital so let's write the electronic configuration it is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p1 now double the uh, sorry add up the superscripts so if you add up the superscripts it is 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1 so it will give you total of 13 electrons now the element which has total of 13 electrons is aluminum so this photo electron spectrum corresponds to aluminum atom now let's see this question the question is the photo electron spectra of the 3s electrons of sodium and calcium are shown below why is there a difference in intensity and position of signals now you can see here that they have not given a complete photo electron spectra but they have given a photo electron spectra of 3s electrons of calcium and sodium only we need to tell that why there is difference in intensity and why there is difference in the position of the signals now we know that why there is difference in intensity uh, in a spectra the difference in intensity of a spectra is always because of the difference in the number of electrons so if we are talking about 3s orbital of sodium and calcium for sodium the 3s orbital has one electron and for calcium it has two electrons so that is why there is difference in the intensities but if we are talking about the position of the signals we need to see the difference in the binding energy of the electrons and the binding energy depends upon the attraction between the protons and the electrons for sodium the number of protons are 11 and for calcium the number of protons is 20 so it means that calcium has more number of protons so if calcium has more number of protons so the 3s electrons would be binding more towards the nucleus so it will have more binding energy but in case of sodium as there are less number of protons so the electrons 3s electrons would not would be a little bit loosely bound 
so this tells about difference in the position of the signals the learning objective of the topic was explain the relationship between the photoelectron spectrum of an atom or ion and the electron configuration of the species which we did and the second part was the interactions between the electrons and the nucleus so this we did in the last question that how the interactions between the electrons and nucleus affect the position of the signals in the spectrum Please like and subscribe to the channel Log Iota and press the bell icon.